What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. I am Frosho, and in the last episode, we were able to get the, both the slingshot, excuse me, and the fishing rod, and then a monkey appeared at the very end of the episode after we showed all the little kids of how to use this, both the slingshot and the sword, and then a monkey, they chased the monkey out here into the woods, so it's our job to go after them. So right here, we have Beth, and she was not able to keep up with them. Tallow and Mallow went chasing went chasing like crazy people after that monkey. I can't keep up with those two. Alright, so if we keep going down here, we're actually going to find the baby Tal uh, Mallow right here. And we just ran right past him. I did not try to do that. I tried to actually talk to him. Beak? They went that way. The rest is up to you, Bryant. Okay, so we, now we need to um, head over here, and as we can see, this gate over to the Farron Woods is open. So that's actually where they went. We need to head over there really quick. Because the Farron Woods is really dangerous. There's monsters there. If we're not quick, we could end up losing them to the monsters. Alright, so we do have... Um, so, um, we need to go after um, freaking Tallow and Mallow. However... Okay, there's no, it's not right here. Okay, I was thinking, because there is something that we can do right before we go over there. Well, actually, something we have to do. So we can just jump over this gate right here. And then what we need to do, we need to actually um, run over here and get past this little spring. And before going right in here, we can turn down this way. Um, to the left, Epona. Go. Thank you. Go down here. And then we have this little guy with um with an afro right over here. We can talk to him. All right, this is Koro. Whoa, an Ordonian. Hey, guy. Listen, I'm not sure if you've been wandering around the woods without a lantern. Just because it's daylight doesn't mean it's safe. There are tons of caves and dank spots around here that get pretty dark even in the middle of the day. Here, go on, guy. Take this. All right, so we got the lantern. So now we have the lantern. We can go around into dark plot the, the, the dark places, and actually be able to see. So if you remember, in our house, we actually had the basement, which was too dark. We can actually go over and use the lantern now to actually see what's in there. So I'm actually going to equip the lantern to R real quick, and we can take it out and use it. Um, however, we're gonna want to save that. Um, we can light these torches if you want. Um, they don't really do anything, though. Alright, so now that we actually have the lantern, now we can progress. So, what we want to do, we need to go over here and just simply go through this gate, and we actually cannot take Epona with us. So, let's kill this enemy right here. This is Deku Baba, and he leaves some pumpkin seeds, or some seeds that we can just use for our slingshot. So, we have full ammo for a slingshot. Right here, we actually have the play wooden sword that Tallow left, or that Tallow had before. So, yes, because he dropped it, that means something happened. So we need to go after him really quick. Alright, so here we are in this little cave, um, like, portion, right before we head up into, um, the northern part of Farron Woods, anyway. Alright, so we want to light these torches as we go, um, just so that we can see. You can still kind of see without the lantern, however... Um, I just want to light everything because you can find certain things and you can find, um, like, d um, certain little passageways and stuff like that with treasure chests in them. And also we have these spider webs, so you kind of have to light these, um, spider webs on fire to get through. Alright, so if we go right, right through here. Okay, hold on a second. Alright, so I'm thinking we actually will have something down here. Let's go down here and see. We can just ignore these enemies if you want. Yeah, we have a treasure chest right here. However, they will get annoying, so let's just kill them real quick. Open this chest right here, and we get a yellow rupee. So, um, one thing that they did in the original Twilight Princess um, was whenever you reset your game, uh, whenever you reset your game. So if you turn off your system and you turn it back on, even though you've gotten a blue rupee or a red rupee or any kind of rupee that's not green before. The game simply forgets that you did, and then it just says, oh, you got a blue rupee, like it's the very first time that you got one, even though you've gotten, like, you could have gotten, like, 30 of them. I, but for whatever reason, they took, for a good reason, they took that out in this one, and it only does that if you actually open chests, but if I were to find, like, a blue rupee from, like, just slicing around in the grass right here, 
then it would say, oh, you got a blue rupee, five, or whatever. Like, I don't know why, it's just stupid. But luckily, they did fix that. So we do have some enemies over here in the Fair northern part of Farron Woods. Um, we have that Deku Baba right there, and we have Bakoblins. It's the first time we see them in this, um... Um, in this game so far. Um, Bako Blends have been around um, in many different installments of the Zelda series. However, this is um, each one has like their own unique um, style of them. These are the Twilight Princess ones. Um, and we can still kill them pretty quickly, even with our weak wooden sword. We will get better swords later on. But However, right now, all we have is this crappy wooden sword. Um, we will kill these enemies even faster. Alright, so um, in the northeastern corner of this map, we actually have something waiting for us. Um, very big prize, actually. So we're actually going to go ahead and do that real quick. Um, we just got to fight our way through here. These enemies, they just keep coming at us. So we just need to kill them all. Alright, so right here you see there's this little cave right here. We got some keys, as they're called, these bat enemies. You can just call them bats. For whatever reason, they decide to call them keys. Not keys, keys. Alright, so right here we have this, um, this little cave, um, which this thing, the chest is guarded by a Bakoblin and a piece. Alright, so now that they're dead, we can go ahead and, oh, there's another one right here. So we just open up this chest right here, and then we get a key. And so we need this key to actually um, go ahead and open up a gate. So if we light these torches right here, solve this classic Zelda puzzle, and then a chest magically appears. And so it's a bigger chest, so you know it's got something good in it. So we open up this chest right here, and we get the very first piece of heart in the game. So in Twilight Princess, and only Twilight Princess, you, it requires five heart pieces in order to get a full heart container. Every other Zelda game only does four. For whatever reason in Twilight Princess, they decided to make it do five. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. But since they made you have to get five in order to get a full heart container in Twilight Princess, there are a total of two heart pieces in every single dungeon in the game. So it helps you out. They, they kind of help you out a little bit with getting more heart pieces. They're like, oh, well, you got to collect five of them. Well, you'll find two in every single dungeon. So I'm going to be collecting all of the heart pieces in the game. There's a bunch of them. I can't remember the exact number at the top of my head right now. But we will be collecting all of them. So, with that in hand, we'll just go over here and kill these Bakoblins right here. And um, the frame rate kind of lagged a little bit while I was killing those Bakoblins. Open this gate right here, and we have a yet another one. And we'll kill it, and then we'll progress. So, we actually weren't in the northern um, portion of Farron Woods right there. Now we are. Alright, so we have some more Bakoblins right here. We can just go ahead and kill them. These um, little enemies right here. These are so easy. We're gonna find some more. Um, str we're gonna find more stronger enemies later on. All right. So right here, we have a little store right here. This is actually um, Koro's bird, and you can tell because he actually has um, an afro as well. So what we he has some things for us to buy. Um, what we can do, we can just um, scoop up some lantern oil right here, or we can get some red potion. I am actually going to simply drink this milk right here and I am going to buy some lantern oil because you always want to have lantern oil on you and then you can also actually put your um your lantern in here and you can fill it up as well so you can make sure it's full all right so lantern oil costs 20 rupees now if you don't pay anything there's no way he can stop you he'll come and attack you but really, that you can come in here and get free lantern oil every time. Or, you can simply just put in, like, one rupee. Like, seriously. You can put in one rupee. That's a bit on the skimpy side. And see, he won't attack you at all. Pay like you're supposed to next time, you cheapskate. So he won't do anything. Literally, you can come in here every time and just give him one rupee. And then that's how you can get the lantern oil. Literally, this is the cheapest way you can get lantern oil in the game so far. There are other places where you can buy it, and every other place you have to pay the full price. Here, you only gotta pay one rupee. Um, there's also enemies that will give us lantern oil later on in the game. Um, we have yet to find them, but just keep that in mind. So yeah, so there's plenty of places where you can get lantern oil and or potions and stuff. Got another yellow rupee right there. 
And so now what we want to do, we want to head up here this little pathway. And right here is actually the forest temple. And we can see that Tallow and the monkey are captured and stuck in a cage. So we got to go save them. Let's go over here. So yeah, the forest temple is right here. We will explore that a little bit later in the game. Not quite yet. So we got some more Bakalins. We have to kill these guys right now. Um, they're very easy. Not the best bodyguards or not the best guards that you have um, for a, a freaking cage right here. So we want to go over here and we can do a spin attack and it will cut them through the bars. Somehow we didn't cut Tallow or the monkey while doing that. But it breaks the cage and now they are free. Alright, so now we're walking back with Tallow. And, um... Tallow is going to be in big trouble for going out into the woods like that. If you hadn't come, Bryant, gee, me and that monkey would probably have gotten eaten. She's a pretty nice gal. That monkey, she tried to protect me, so we got captured together. Um, Bryant, you're not going to mention this to my dad, are you? He's always telling me to never, ever go into the forest because he says it's dangerous. So you really can't tell him. Really? You have to promise. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but somebody already has told him. Bryant. All right, we have Russell here. My son told me Tallow disappeared into the woods and had not returned. I came as soon as I heard, but it looks like you have brought him home already. I apologize. Such a task should not fall to you. Eh, it's kind of what we do. Tell me, have you noticed how strange this wood seems lately? I feel uneasy about mo what, what may lie in wait. Anyway, Bryant, tomorrow is finally the day. You will be departing for Hyrule. I think it's a good thing I have given this task to you. <laughs> good luck, and return safely. If you are lucky, you may even get to meet Princess Zelda. <laughs> Little does he know. <laughs> we actually will, of course. Spoilers, you actually meet Zelda in a Zelda game. <laughs> Alright, so here we are in Ordon Ranch. Ordon, Ordon, however you want to pronounce it. Hey, Bryant. Oh, this is the um, freaking ranch guy. I gotta give him sort of like that southern accent. <laughs> so, almost time for you to get going, huh, Bryant? How, so, how's about we finish up early today, bud? All right, so we need to call a pono with this horse grass again. I just call it horse grass because it calls your horse. <laughs> I don't actually know what it's called. It's it's horse it's horse grass, you guys. All right, so we need to hop on a pono, and then we have another um, little mini game right here with the um, the goats. So I said, like I said last time, we are timed, and we have 20 goats to get this time. Now it really doesn't matter how fast you do it. Um, or how slow you do it anyway. Um, because it's simply, I guess the time limit is just so you can get, like, a better record or something. But you can take, like, t 10 minutes to do this whole thing and it won't really matter that much. The only thing that sucks about this minigame is that you can't actually speed up. Because A is what you use to whoop the freaking goats. So you can't actually go fast. This is as fast as you can go. And we got one goat in that time. That kind of sucks. All right, let's get these two goats in there. There we go. All right, so we got nine out of 20 of them. Let's go get these three right here. Now, remember, you got to be careful with these goats because if you just keep mashing A behind them, and oh, we'll be able to get a whole bunch right here if we can get all of them. And, okay, they turned around. If you just keep mashing A, then they'll get really mad at you and just charge at you. All right, so go into that freaking barn. There we go, got that one. And we got five left, so let's do this. Okay, they're all facing this way, so they should just run instead of turning around. There we go. And we should be able to get all up. Uh, not that one. He's got. Oh, yeah, we are. We should be able to get all of them right now. And are you kidding me? That last one decided to run this way? Come on. Come on, stupid thing. Go into the freaking barn. Up. Oh, yep, see? He's getting mad at me, so he just knocks me right off of Epona. You can actually run in a circle, and then it makes them harder. It makes it harder for them to actually go and charge into you. And eventually, I'm pretty sure they'll just give up and try and just stop trying to charge into you. But anyway, there we go. We got uh, 1 minute and 49 seconds. It's not that bad, I guess. It's all right. All right. Ooh, boy, that's all you can... That, but but y'all can herd. That was 1 minute and 11 seconds faster than usual. Well, how about that about wraps up for today. So how about you head on over to the mayor's place? 
All right, so we can jump over these um, fences if you like, but I'm just gonna go out and head over here, out into the village. All right, so we got another little cutscene right here. Uh, trust me, you guys, we're getting close to the actual story of this game. And we have Ilya right here. Ilya is considered to be Link's love interest in this game. However, they don't really, um, it, the game doesn't really say that or at all. It's just kind of, you can just kind of assume it because of they kind of look at each other and they're like, ah, like that, things like that. Oh, done hurting for today, Bryant? Well, nice work. Yeah, that's the voice I'm giving this guy. <laughs> I forgot to say his name, but his name's Bo. The royal gift Russell told you about is ready, so you should get ready to your, your trip to Hyrule Castle. Now, the royal family requested these gifts specifically, so it's real special. It'd be bad if, rep if the representative of Orden were to be late for such an occasion. You get me, lad? The path before you is a long one, my sweet horse, but please bear Brian out safely along it. Wait, what's this? What happened? She's injured, isn't she? <laughs> Right? How could you? You were pushing opponent too hard again. I bet you hurt your leg, her leg fe jumping fences, didn't you? Now, no, Ilya. There's no need to get so hot with him. Father! <laughs> How can you be so easy on him? You're the mayor. You should start acting like one. Jeez. <laughs> you poor thing. Man, way to just scold your father and some other guy at the same time. It'll be all right, opponent. I'll take you to the forest spring right now. Once we soothe you in the spirit spring, you'll feel better in no time. So, obviously, we cannot progress unless we have Epona. Well, wait, Ilya! Why, without Epona, the gift will never won't be delivered in time. Oh, this won't do. Alright, so, before we can do anything, we'll actually have to go get Epona from Ilya, and she went to the Orden Spring. However, we're at 17 minutes, so I think we're going to call this an episode. We'll do that in the next episode. I know, I know, we're not progressing that much, but that's just this game. It starts out really slow. In the next episode, we will actually get into this game, for sure. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here, so you'll be notified of whenever I make new videos. Make sure you turn on mobile notifications, just so you're guaranteed to get notifications when I make new videos. You can check out my friend Kofi's channel down in the description below. He's making the thumbnails for these videos and he makes some pretty good videos himself so you're gonna want to check him out. Support him just like you do with my videos. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Fro Show, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.